What's my crime? The fairy tale prince has turned back into a frog, is that it? Well, it's no fun for me either. I'd rather keep my magic. Though, it's only trading it out of shadow. You must admit, I do it superbly. I should. I worked at it. Surely you'd like to know how. It's a sad but fascinating story. The making of a detective. Briefly then, I am a middleman. I've spent my life making three or two a company. I was barely out of puberty before I started becoming attracted to other men's wives. Women who were unattainable obsessed me. Usually out of guilt, I'd work up a friendship with the husband and take a painful pleasure in being a constant guest in their home. Masochism, you see. Very un-Latin. One time, I made myself so upset, I had to sit down and think. And I asked myself the painful question. Would you like to know a beautiful, tender, unattached girl to whom you mean everything in the world? And the answer came back. No. Revelation. At this point, I realised something shattering about myself. I wasn't meant to bear the responsibility of a private life. Obviously, nature had never intended for me to have one. I'd been created to spend my life completely in public. This thought simply delighted me. It seemed to account for everything. Alone, I didn't exist. I only came alive against the background of other people's affairs. Once I realised this, of course, it was the simplest thing in the world to select a more permanent career. A detective was the obvious solution, so I gave up my private life and became a public eye. A dick. I found you. Aimless in London. I found you smileless. I gave you direction. I gave you joy for a week. But small, particular, bright moments of joy is all we should ever hope for to expect. Give us self-pity. Does it become you? You are my business. Look into my eye. No, this one. Closer. Look. What do you see? I will tell you. You see one of the seven wonders of nature. The completely public eye. That looks entirely outward. Besides this eye, the eagle is blind. The puma needs spectacles. Without a modesty, I tell you, this eye beholds the most watchful iris, the most percipient retina, the most attentive cornea in the northern hemisphere. And for almost a month, it's been focused entirely on you. That's more than anyone you will ever meet will focus on. And, may I say, it belongs to a man of taste and refinement who has been made to sit through more excruciating horror films than anyone could wish to bear in a lifetime of duty. <laughs>